as we came in, the begin in the beginning of January to start our excavation, we had high hopes of locating in place and relatively or completely undisturbed uh, layers of Holocene and Pleistocene dirt. In terms of geology, we've essentially hit a bullseye on a target we couldn't possibly see. We're very pleased. It's very clear there's a, a, a buried land surface down there that would have been of great appeal to Pleistocene and Holocene humans. But there's a nice place to live adjacent to this pond environment that has little tiny streams running in and out of it. Archaeologically, we've, we found a few things, but they're in a meaningful context, which makes all the difference in the world. It's not simply that we have some neat stuff, it's we have a few pieces of neat stuff in an incredibly meaningful position. I think our staff, our crew, the, including all of the students, and all of the volunteers, local and, and people coming from miles and miles away, have all learned a tremendous amount. Not simply some interesting things about the Pleistocene and Holocene occupation of Vero Beach by, by people for thousands and thousands of years, but also about how to identify those very things that, that tell us that, those, that story of the early humans on this landscape with mammoths and mastodons, how to identify fragments of bones and, and tiny pieces of stone and little bits of seeds, the very building blocks of our data set. Everyone is walking away from here smarter. We fully expect to come back and try and work fairly closely uh, adjacent to where we've been working right now. We'd like to open up more of that level and, and of those levels and that area. Uh, and we're already in our planning stages. We're actually well into our planning stages for next season.